buzz, buzz, love bugs. This is your Queen V, the Kate Murphy, on the pilot episode of Love and War, the first date. Joining me on this Monday afternoon, my co-host, the most royal person I know, King Ricky Rose. What's up, uh, buddy? Oh, uh, I mean, uh, not much going on. Uh, I'm very glad that we're finally getting down to this. You know, the first date is always kind of the hardest date so let's uh let's really let's get this out of the way and then we're gonna start digging into some uh some stuff here between uh wrestling and love and some of our personal experiences of everything in between god thank god you're a counselor (laughs) really (laughs) Mm mm-hmm Yes, yes, yes. I've I've dealt with many people's relationships, uh, whether I wanted to or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so it it kind of just it kind of comes with the territory. Um, even though I am not like a marriage and or family therapist, I'm just a generic mental health counselor. But uh, it it people come to me and talk to me about the most random stuff anyway. So you kind of get used to it. And I've I've always told people that I've um. Uh, I probably I'm I'm horrible not even horrible relationships I'm not I'm never in a relationship but I can tell you everything about a specific relationship because not only have I just observed people's relationships people just come and talk to me about all their relationship problems so like I'm like a relationship guru without the experience I have the kind same of sad. exact problem as you do you really because I feel like all I'm talking to is like my friends about like their husbands or fiancés. Or, like, the young kids at work with their, like, little crushes. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm now, a lot of my friends are now getting married. And, you know, little single old B is just out here still drinking. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I, I dealt a lot with a lot of people's relationships. And now it's the marriage thing. And, like, I really have no no experience in marriage whatsoever. So uh, I think that's probably why a lot of people stopped coming to me for advice. It's like, I kind of did my job. You're married. Congratulations. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot harder now that everybody's getting married. Because at this point, like, my close circle of friends, I have two married couples. I have an engaged couple, a soon-to-be-engaged couple, and two couples that are just, like, in love. Yeah, you have the whole spectrum. Yeah, and then there's me and my one friend that are single, and that's it. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting weird out there, because, like... A lot of my friends are getting married. A lot of my good friends are getting married or they're already married or they're married with a kid or married with a kid and now they're buying a house. And so they have, like, I have all these different spectrums. And, uh, you know, and I, I I look around and it's getting to the point where, like, I got to kind of keep, like, a, uh, a checklist by my bedside. We're like, oh, my God, she's gone too? Fuck. Like, you know, my list is dwindling. It's <laughs> from, hard out there. From perspectives. I mean, it could even be, it's probably even harder for you because you have, uh, you're gender non-binary. So you, uh, you probably have more perspectives that I do. Oh, it's a train wreck out there. So, being almost 30, being Mm -hmm. queer, and being non-binary makes dating so incredibly hard. Like, you would think I have more options. I have probably less options than you. That's Oh, well, you have have multiple genders to go by. I do, but this is how I found that it works. Women don't reach out to me because unless they're looking for, like, a third. Like, they have a partner already and they want a toy basically okay and then non-binary people i've never really had a connection with romantically i don't know there's just like i get the, the vibe a lot that i'm not queer enough huh. and you would think like with the lgbt community it's supposed to be you know very inclusive very open-minded very accepting a lot of it isn't and with dating it almost seems like a competition i felt like who's more queer like, especially, I just, I don't like it. It makes it hard for me. Like, men is just, they're always there. Like, when I, like, go on Tinder, if I go on Hinge, I have it set to look for anybody. But it's, like, all men. For, like, every 50 men I get, I get, like, one woman. Really? Just to swipe through. Yeah. That's interesting. It seems to me that women in their 30s are, um, you know, paired off already. I mean that's that's kind of the idea what society tells us. Yeah. Is that they tell us by thirty you should have your shit together. Well, now they tell us by thirty you should have your shit together. Like I think in in decades ago it was like by twenty five you need to have your shit together. It just keeps getting older as you go along because of uh, a lot of economic reasons and a bunch of stuff in between. Yeah, uh, we're fucked. You, 
Yeah, pretty much. I'm, you know, I'm, there's, there's, no, there's no hope for me. I've, I've, unfortunately, I've given up on, on, on dating. <laughs> uh, for, for the most part, it's kind of one of those things where, like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of looking. I'm tired of putting an effort. Per se, because yeah. I feel like I put in a lot of effort, um, and it just doesn't really come to the fruition that I wanted to, which might be me having maybe loftier expectations and not seeing the reality of things. Um, or maybe it's just I'm picking shitty people. <laughs> you know, it, I haven't figured it out yet. Um, or maybe You're I just. You're probably don't, picking shitty people. I probably don't want to believe that aspect. There are a lot of them, though. Like, it's not your fault. You know, I, I it's probably it's probably me not wanting to believe that aspect, um, and kind of always you know inherently seeing the good in people because the power of positivity is a real thing. Go new day, um, and it, it's it, it's hard to come to that realization because then it becomes another really really uh, depressing realization of mm-hmm. all the other things that you, that I kind of battle through with the whole relationship spectrum. Um, but I always like to equate my my uh, my love my my love triangle or not love triangle my um my love stories as like a series of unfortunate events like very lemony snicket. Yeah, I relate. <laughs> <laughs> like, like everything seems like it's going well, and then all of a sudden there's a crash and burn, and it just goes down downhill real quick. Um, and it's unfortunate. So it got to the point where like I just stopped looking. And I'm just gonna like do me and see whatever floats my boat. And that's when usually the weirdest things happen. So who knows what's gonna happen? Usually, when um, the best things happen is when you're not actively looking for it. Oh my god, yes, I know. <laughs> like the best relationships I've ever had were relationships that like weren't cultivated through the internet. Like I wasn't on Tinder, I wasn't on OkCupid, I wasn't set up. Like I just like met somebody somewhere and I just happened to connect, and then it was great for a while. And then it wasn't. And- I don't know, I'm, as much as Tinder and Hinge and all these, like, apps and websites are really great and convenient and can open you up to so many people that you might not have had the opportunity to meet, it make it's just, it's so artificial. And I don't like it. Like, I don't want to tell my grandkids, oh, I swiped right on your grandparent. <laughs> like, that's not cute. I grew up with Disney movies. I grew up with, like, true love's first kiss and all that nonsense. Mm-hmm. We, you grew up on happily ever after. I did. You know, not that's and now I it's okay, kind of okay ever after, maybe. It potentially ever after, maybe after two years. You know, um, the the I mean, the rate of divorce is almost at like fifty percent. Like it's it's like literally like a coin flip. Yeah. Whether you're whether you're like stay together or not, um, in this day and age. And I actually wrote eons ago, um, in one of my blogs about how the modern idea of relationships shouldn't work. And this was me going on a tangent. I was also challenged by my cousin to think of something radical. And I was like, all right, here's what we got. Um, And I said, we should really equate relationships and marriages more to, we should modernize it to make it more like a, um, like an athletic contract for like a pro sport. Okay. Okay. So, so this is, Follow me on this. Um, this is this is the one of my the wackiest one of the wackiest ideas I've ever come up with in life is where you take uh, you take the idea of marriage um, and and everything and you you legitimately get married, but it's for it's not happily ever after. It's for a period of time. Okay. Okay. And so uh, it it's, it becomes a very legal process where if such incentives are met within a period of time. Maybe you want to resign once the contract is up. You know, maybe you want to not resign them and start exploring other options, but you give a time frame on this to kind of see how things work. And then every so often, a couple of years, you, just, you get back, you sit back at the table and you try to figure it all out. Maybe that's the way we should go with these things. Legally, I love that. But at the same time, though, like, there's, like, a part of me that would hate that because there'd be a little voice nagging and, like, pegging at me that at the end of my contract, I'm going to get traded to something else. You could. Maybe you meet somebody. Maybe you want to explore something with that person. I mean, it, it I takes know, a lot. it's just conceptually, like, part of it would just, like, bruise my ego a bunch. Oh, it totally takes the emotion out of everything. Um, it makes it so, a, totally a hardcore just decision-making model and totally void of all emotions. Hey, I um, thrive during the emo 
revival. Like I'm all emotion. <laughs> That's why like, you I, get want, this idea. I wish I could just like get married for like some legal business reason, but I can't, and it sucks. What do you mean you can't get married for some legal business reason? Because I'm I want because I want my Disney movie deep down inside. <sighs> you want to be a Disney princess? Yeah. Just like uh, Hella is in Encore. That's not but. Well, yeah, there's no Disney queens. No, Hell is a Disney princess, technically, from Hell Thor is... Ragnarok. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hela is technically a Disney princess from Thor Ragnarok, so congratulations, congratulations to Hela. Doesn't that also make Rey a Disney princess as well? From, yeah. Uh, Rey is a tec- Disney princess. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, the prin- I don't even know all the Disney princesses. We gotta, I gotta keep a chart. Yeah, I feel like like the list of Disney princesses is getting confusing. Because Disney keeps on stealing property, that's why. It steals property, and then there are some people that were considered princesses, but then there are some people that aren't considered princesses. Like, some people consider Tinkerbell to be a princess when she's not. How is Tinkerbell a princess? She's a fairy. Exactly. But like, because she's, an, I guess, an iconic Disney female. But she's not. She's a fairy. Yes, I know that. A scantily clad fairy, but a fairy yeah. nonetheless. You know, but so she's as iconic as a princess. Mm-hmm. So let, let's delve into, I guess, our relationship history, starting with you, Kate Murphy. Oh dear. Yeah, so, I mean, this is the first date, so we we got to let everybody know, like, what are we working with here? What is our what is our relationship history like? Um. So I spent the like all of my early twenties in the same serious committed relationship. That, for the most part, was not that great. Uh, I ended it after four years. Then my mid-20s was spent kind of just philandering, you know, in and out of, like, couple m- relationships that lasted a few months that weren't really that good. Like, they were fine. They just weren't true love. Mm-hmm. Then I fell in love, and then I fell out of love, and then I've been single, like, pretty much for the last two years. And I've, like, seen people here and there. I've had, like month month and a half long courtships with various musician degenerates and are musicians your thing yeah (laughs) i've i think almost everyone i've ever dated plays bass really (laughs) almost everyone i've ever i date always ends up dating bass players slap at the bass Mm -hmm. and that's been a thing since like high school even my boyfriends in high school were all in bands Wow, oh, with, really? Yeah. it's. I've had a type, like, my whole life with guys. And then I've never had any r- romantic relationships with females. I've never even gone on a date with a girl just because, like, I can't even, like, talk to women on Tinder. Why not? I, us- I usually don't match. With, they usually don't match with me or they mm. stop talking to me really quickly. Like, guys kind of stop talking to me really quickly, too, but not as quickly as women. And yeah. I'm not quite sure why. I don't know either, because you're fun. I know I'm fun. <laughs> but, like, I feel like on, like, dating, like, apps and, like, sites like that, like, I can't convey that I'm fun without seeming like a lunatic. Very true. I have that same issue. Yeah. And I'm just tired of having the same conversation over and over again. Like, anytime I mention, they're like, oh, what do you podcast about? I'm like, oh, wrestling. They're like, oh, cool. I watched wrestling as a kid. Undertaker's my favorite. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you and everyone else. <laughs> and it's just the wrestling aspect of it usually gives me such a mixed reaction. Mm. Like, either that's really cool of me or, oh, like, you're probably kind of weird. Like, are you like a horse girl, too? Like A horse girl? You know, like, girls that, like, were always, like, super obsessed with horses, and then they never kind of grew out of it? No, I've never heard of this phrase whatsoever. Like, girls that loved, like, ponies. Like, My Little Pony and all that shit? Yeah, but, like, with real ponies. Oh, there's nothing wrong with being an equestrian, or or whatever it's called. But there's just, like, a negative connotation being a horse girl. I've never heard of this whatsoever. Horse girl, look it up. I'm but, I'm gonna have to look and up. And it's Porsche the same thing now. like with fucking weebs. With you know, what? like people that are like super into anime. Yeah. But it's mostly just white people appropriating Japanese culture. 
why people appropriating child. Yes, yes, usually it is. Yeah. <laughs> I've yes. dated one. It's not. Oh, it's really cringy. Like it. I think that's like bottom. Like, like I think that's worse than being a wrestling fan. But other people would disagree. I've been told that wrestling is redneck anime, and I'm just like. Okay. That's incorrect. It's redneck soap opera, but you it know. is red. <laughs> I mean, some animes can be really dramatic. I liked anime in, like, middle school, high school. I never got into the anime stuff. That was just me. Yeah. I was, too busy. Being... I was too busy being the shit. Oh. <laughs> I was wearing a fedora and, like, reading anime in high school. And I had a better dating life yeah, than I do me. now as an adult. Like, in high school, I'd I always had a boyfriend. <laughs> now as an adult, I'm like, Nope. Really? Yeah, I feel like the older I get, the worse I get at dating. Like, seventh grade, I was big pimping. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you now with your fedora and, like, your pimp cane. Yeah. And just a plethora of dudes just walking behind you. Yeah, that's how it was. You're like the godfather, just walking down the hallway with your hoe train. Oh, yeah. I had a hoe train. <laughs> Middle school was fun. But they're all wholesome, like, two-week-long relationships, though. That was just Hannah holding and kissing on the cheek between classes. Remember when that's all it took? It was so wholesome and easy. <laughs> now it's, like, it's too much now. You have to jump <clears> through <throat> hoops and provide a credit check and a background check, and it's just too much. And make sure you're clean. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot. Getting a job is easier than finding a partner. You might be correct. Mm -hmm. You might be correct with that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I I haven't had that much luck as you going through my history of dating. Let's, let's open up Pandora's box a little bit here. Um, two is two on on record, on record as we'll say in canon, um, as we can say. I've actually only had one girlfriend in my life. Really? See, it surprises the shit out of everybody. Because everybody who knows me is like, I'm pretty much an experience, um, but it's hard to... <laughs> there <laughs> like, is a experience. I, I, I am pretty much an experience in and of, in and of myself, uh, because I'm just, there's so many varying things and interests, and I'm always into something, and I'm always doing something. You'd be surprised that I just, like, I do a lot of this stuff by myself. Um... And I think it's because there's so much to me. Like, I'm, I hate to compare myself to Shrek, but, like, onions have layers. Um, onions do have layers. <laughs> onions do have layers. So there's, there's a lot of depth to me, and there's not a lot of people that actually see all those intricacies of my personality. Because it's it can go in many, many different ways. So I only had one girlfriend, like, ever. And that girlfriend was in high school um, when I was 16. A so high school girlfriend, too? Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Oh yeah, I was single till 16. Um single, like never been kissed or anything like that until like 16 years old. Um I mean that's a whole story and a half. Long story short, <coughs> after I would say two and a half months or two months, um she confessed to cheating on me and losing her virginity to another dude. Bro. Right. What uh, a kind. So you can Ooh, you no. can surely understand how that really pretty much just just totally just eviscerated me for a very very long time. Yeah, I don't blame you. Um, a lot of good came out of it. I ended up developing a best friend. We had a mutual, or she introduced me to a person who became one of my best friends for a really really long time. Um, I ended up trying to continue the court around uh around high school but that never really worked out in my favor i ended up going to prom by myself um which is you know in for some for some people aka my mother uh very weird uh, how was prom alone i had dates both times prom was great it was so cheap <laughs> <laughs> i think my prom was like 60 bucks but like you have to understand the position that I was in. I was the student body president of my high school. I was one of the captains of my football team. I was helping uh, to manage our our you know our state finalist basketball program. So you're super popular and super known in school. And I went to senior prom by myself. Like like that doesn't equate usually in the high school stereotype. If you look back, though, like, there's a confidence to that. 
and a swagger to that. Or, a, or, or, or as my dad said, you're a bold son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bold, bold would work. <laughs> There, there, there is, and there, it's, it's. It depends on how you look at it. Like, oh wow, that's really cool. It's awesome. You had all that confidence, you know. Or it can be like, wow, that's kind of saddening. Like you couldn't find anybody. Like it's, it's, it's just the way you kind of, you know, see the glass half empty or half full. College comes. I think the Lord, I was single through college. Um, but even then, it, it was really hard because like there's this, there are people that are interested in, but you don't know where you can pull that trigger. Because I'm coming from, you know, now. A uh, relationship that blatantly failed, you know, blatantly mm-hmm. failed in high school to going through college and like you don't know if anything's gonna work. And the last girl that I was messing around with um, in high school uh, turns around and starts spreading these rumors and lies about me. Um, and so now, like, what am I gonna do? Like, I'm getting real pissed here. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I ended up. Uh, uh, we'll have to do an episode on this. I ended up losing my virginity at 20 to, uh, to, to a random, not a semi-random girl back from home. Um, we'll have to do the virginity story podcast. Oh, sure. <laughs> That's going to be a fun one. Um, to someone who ends up not being very, very good for me, as in, like, addicted to coke. But, oh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I moved through college without ever having anything legitimate. I actually did end up having a semi-relationship with somebody that I shouldn't have because I was an RA and I was begging one of my residents. Um, so, Ooh. bad me. Yes, and I was using and I was using her as a weapon to get through my inherent depression with something else. So, Ooh. and I, I realized that halfway through and I continued it all the way until the year ended and then I eventually called it quits after she took me to a Yankee game. Anywho, oh, but she uh so moving along i mean college this was college which was cool and all um and again i was still one of those people who was an ra i was a president of a fraternity and i was doing a lot of this stuff again inherently on my own and by myself not like i wasn't trying not like i didn't have interest it just never really came to be and the ones that i did mess around with it just I either it was a one-time thing or i didn't really actually have a thing for them or vice versa um grad school comes around and now I'm starting to work in bars. Um, gives a side hustle and a gig. And um, and it's like, wow, if I knew then what I know now. I started hanging out with sororities a lot more. And I'm, I'm using, you know, the skills I learned in psychology for good and evil. Because oh, it... No. <laughs> well, because in a bar scene, you can really test a lot of psychological skills out. And people love to talk and they're drunk. And you, sometimes it becomes pretty successful. And then I do have... I did have a really, really big, big interest... Uh, during grad school, who I who I ended up calling my bar girlfriend for a really really long time to the point where a lot of people thought on the low we were dating. Okay. Uh, uh, but we never were. We were we would get to. It was one of those things where we would get together secretly uh, and flirt openly, but we would totally deny. Um, and it was one of those things where like we could never come to the That's table. Fun. Huh? That's fun. Yeah, but it was even like she would be in a relationship and then I would be nothing and then she'd come out of a relationship and then she was there again. Eh, not um, the whole her in a relationship bit. I don't condone that. You know, no, it was one of those things where like she was always she was very boy crazy. Um, but I was always kind of that constant that would always mm-hmm. stick around and she would sometimes even flirt with me like in front of her boyfriends. And I'd be like, You can't do this because I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. And things like that, but we we were blatantly into each other. It's one of the people I actually went on dates with a little bit after grad school. Okay. And then she up and disappeared and left to Brooklyn. I haven't heard from her in two years. Um, Oof. Three actually. It might be going on three. What a bitch. Um, <laughs> you know, and there's also many times that you can hit the busy. Uh, you can use the busy line before I'm just like, you know what, fuck this. Yeah. Uh, you know, so then as we move along into the present term of my on my dating thing, because there's semi-prominent figures. I start going on wrestling Twitter because I'm running a podcast, Kings of the Rings podcast. Obviously, you guys listen to it because myself and Kate Murphy are are one of the hosts of a show, along with uh, Will Tereshock, who's who knows what Will's doing. Oh, um, he's probably playing fucking Red Dead. Who knows what he's doing? Um, and so through through my through my wanderings on wrestling Twitter, and also through my in grad school, I really started getting into wrestling again. Um, I started going to shows and enjoying wrestling and the psychology of wrestling and all of that. And I also realized one thing. 
girls who watch wrestling are really hot. Like I went to shows and I was like, these girls are really fucking hot. Like, like very attractive. Mm-hmm. Um, females go to wrestling events and they <laughs> also moms too. Um, <laughs> But very, very tight. And I was like, wow, I need to find, like, a wrestling bay. Like, it wasn't one of those things where I was actively looking for it. But I I made a note of it. Like, wow, there's really a lot of attractive girls that watch wrestling. This is freaking awesome. <laughs> um, and then one day, I I stumble upon uh, she who shall not be named on this podcast. <laughs> For for a lot of for a lot of safety purposes, <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> well, I, it's going to connect in a second. She shall not be named um, from a country that shall never be named. <laughs> uh, met through DMs, and the initial idea was to get her on the show, and then we ended up getting into more than just talking about business, and we ended up talking about wrestling. We had a lot in common, um, and it was a pretty wild thing because like i said like you know i'm a therapist i'm a counselor i enjoy the one-on-one the human interaction in person and i wasn't getting any of that besides maybe a skype call like we're on right now and via text messages and dms and i felt like i knew this person more so than anybody else in my life um which was crazy like like i felt like a real connection and she wasn't a catfish which is one of the first things we told each other um like oh my god i'm glad you're a catfish um they end up having this really crazy bond to the point where you thought it would lead to dating. Um, spoiler alert, it didn't really. I mean, we visited each other in different countries. She actually came to America for the first time. Um, SummerSlam 20... 17. 2017. Um, and she is probably more prominent on Twitter than I am on my own personal Twitter because uh, she tweets like a maniac a lot of the time. Uh, and so through our wanderings, um, around Brooklyn and New York and me taking her around uh, for the first time and her picture with Dean Ambrose is because of me too um, she one day she's like oh it's this girl's birthday uh, we should go visit her and and you know and, and wish her a happy birthday and so we never found that person um, whose birthday it was um, but lo and behold, looking back on things and looking back on that tweet, um, and I guess years or so later, we ended up finding out, or I ended up finding out, that that person whose birthday we were going to go find and celebrate their birthday with was Kate Murphy. Hello. <laughs> it was my birthday. Long, lo and behold, Kate Murphy becomes uh, one, starts interacting with She Who Shall Not Be Named, along with a bunch of uh, a couple of other uh, females. They ended up performing the Valkyrie. They ended up. Becoming, I was in a faction once. They ended up becoming one of our our four of our biggest uh, supporters of the podcast at a time. Um, the Valkyrie is no more, probably because we we did a work shoot about a year or so ago and not a lot of people enjoyed that the valkyrie broke up and i joined the show that's what happened with the work pretty much the valkyrie broke up kate murphy by hooker by crook joined the show um and then at some point i revealed to kate murphy about she shall not be named because somehow you never put it together no. <laughs> i don't like everybody else had it together except for you <laughs> Which I find so, so funny um, to, to this day. And then kind of here we are. And then somehow, somewhere down the road, Kate and, and I said, hey, let's do a show about our relationships. So not only do our relationships are very unique, but they kind of have some sort of, especially um, on my front, you know, a very big interconnectivity with this whole damn show and wrestling in and of itself. Yeah. I feel... <laughs> I feel like wrestling has had just such this this most strange impact in my dating life. Like mostly funny stories. True. I mean, when I was uh, when I was with she used to not be named in, in our courtmanship, wrestling was the biggest thing that we were connected to. And even to this day, even though we don't talk religiously, like we YouTube, there's always that weird common bond of wrestling. Like it's like wrestling. Um, when you're when you're dating somebody who's also wrestling, and then when you're not really like dating or courting anymore, wrestling is kind of that safe topic, mm-hmm. you know, that you can talk to without talking about the things that you really probably should talk about. But you can always talk about wrestling, which is cool and, and it's depressing at the same time. Yeah, uh, I have an I have an ex partner who was the same deal. Like we used to we connected over wrestling. We used to watch pay per views together. 
I watched my first Wrestle Kingdom with them. <laughs> like, even after we broke up, like, wrestling has been, like, one of the biggest, like, foundations of our friendship. We have, like, a very good friendship to this day. And yeah. I don't think it would be as good if wrestling didn't exist. Yeah, weird, why? And that's kind of why we're here for uh, for Love and War. We want to talk about how wrestling and relationships and also just our own personal relationships in general um, with She Who Shall Not Be Named and, and other things going on in Kate Murphy's life mm -hmm. as well. We're also going to be going through... Uh, Kate, you have rejoined Hinge and Tinder, is that correct? I have. My signs of last night. It's rough out there already. Mm -hmm. It is fucking rough. Can I... May I just provide an example? Sure, let's 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 go down a rabbit hole a little bit. All right. So, the older I get, the worse I get with dating. And I just don't think that I'm like hip to this or maybe I'm not good at talking like through text. I'm not really sure. But I don't I don't really interact with people as much anymore. I have like no matches. I have three <laughs> matches on Tinder and one on Hinge in a day. That's so, better than usually what I can, I'm able to put together. But, like, when I was, like, a young spring chicken, it would be, like, match, 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 match. And it would mostly be, like, bottom feeders, but, like, <laughs> still. Now, are you one of those people or that are swiping on everybody, right? Or are you being selective? Oh, no. Oh, God, no. I'm so selective. It's gross. So that's probably a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But, like, for the most part, I find something that I feel like would bother me. Or if I just have, I look at a picture and I have a vibe, and I'm like, oh, you're probably going to be a douchebag, bye. Hmm, okay. Which is kind, which is kind of probably bad, because I'm probably, like, missing out on, like, good people. I just don't, I just get, like, a vibe, like, a feeling in my gut. And yeah. I whenever I betray that feeling, like, I usually end up in relationships for either longer than I should or relationships I shouldn't be in at all. So you're really going on a gut instinct here. Yeah, like, my last relationship, I knew within a day that I, like, did not like him, and I just had, like, a weird vibe, and I tried to get past it, I could not shake it, and then a month later, I snapped, and I'm like, I can't do this! And then I dumped him, and then we still had to go to WrestleMania, and, like, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> uh, and then he stalked you for a little bit, that was kind of weird. Oh, yeah, he saw us at Raw. From the rafters, and we were, like, yeah. on the floor. Yeah, that was not okay. All right, so on, this is what I've seen so far. What have you seen? So one photo is just, like, a wall. The okay. name. Want to get pegged? Age 22. And then the bio was always wanting to get pegged, so I said, fuck it, 2020 is my year. Into other kinks also will send pics if we match. And you matched with this person. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> I swiped far, far away from that. Um, I found a guy that kind of looks like Enzo Amore. We will have to delve. We will have to delve into another episode. Of your obsession with Enzo. Oh my god. Because honestly, there I are get... times I wonder if I'm attracted to him. But like, I am sometimes. Okay, but like, I still, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it, Kate. I just, I've always loved him. Since the moment I saw him, I just knew he was, like, my favorite thing. But he was never a daddy. <laughs> he was this never is, a daddy. Never, not once. This is why you can't have nice things. No. And then my favorite thing that's happened to me this week on Tinder. This guy I've been, like, speaking with who I'm slowly trying to ghost. Um, he Are you seriously noticed really trying to ghost? That, well, this is what. So, he, on my tw uh, Tinder, it says non-binary. So, he asked my pronouns, and I'm like, and I told him, they, them. And I'm like, thanks for asking. And then he goes, of course, mine are he, him. And I'm like, okay, I was just about to ask. And then he goes, I'm pretty much straight, I guess. I'm not really attracted to men. So, shrugging emoji. And I'm just like, one does not equal the other. And then the more he talks to me, the more I realize, like, we're incompatible. Like, he wants to, like, live on a farm, like, off the grid with, like, goats. <laughs> and, and, and I need the internet, so. 
Okay, that makes sense. Different lifestyles. Yeah. But I don't know. That just the whole, like, gender sexuality thing, shit like that bothers me. What do you mean? Like, people assuming that, like, anyone that, like, has a, gen- like, a different gender identity is automatically queer or, like, vice versa. Like, things like that. Mm-hmm. Like, him okay. mentioning his pronouns and then being like, I'm pretty much straight. Like, correlation does not equal causation. Sure, he's probably definitely had some gay interactions. I feel like he definitely has and he's in denial. Yeah, I'm, pre- I'm pretty, the, pretty much Pretty much the I guess and the question mark, I'm like, you sucked a dick, sir. <laughs> uh, I'm not, and then I'm not really attracted to men. Yeah, but there is that one exception all the time. Every yeah. Straight, every straight guy has an exception. Don't let them tell you different. Mm-hmm. Don't let them tell you different. Other things we're going to be tackling on this show is, I guess, my own personal relationships experiences. Uh, because even though I haven't, and I did, I failed to mention this in my little soliloquy about my, my life. I just gave you the highlights of it. But even though I haven't been an actual boyfriend to a lot of people, I have always filled a void in a lot of females' lives, which I end up being the void filler or the lesson planner, or lesson teacher, actually, um, which is a gift and a curse, because the lesson teacher then turns me into kind of good luck Chuck, which I, I end up either, like, filling a void for a particular amount of time, or teaching some sort of lesson, which, in essence, whenever they get that, or they get that void filled, or they learn that lesson, then they then use what they took from me, and then they apply it to somebody new. I relate to that really spiritually. There. Good luck, Chuck, is my number one, like, how I describe my relationships. Because pretty much everyone I have dated since, like, everyone that has dated me, their next partner they end up, like, settling down with. Yeah, and I, 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 I don't get it. <laughs> I'm like, what did I do? Like, I don't get it. And, like, sometimes I know where's been times where I've been tensioned. We're like, you know what? I'm fixing this. Um, and there's other times where, like, I just, I inherently did not try to fix anything. Um, and, and it still just ended up happening. Um, in and of itself. Which, which is... I don't know, I, I can't get out, kind of can't get out of that slump, but maybe I don't need somebody, maybe I don't need to get out of that slump, maybe I just need somebody to kind of understand, like, or maybe I need somebody who's competent in their own person at the time. Yeah. Who knows? Um, uh, who knows? So we'll be talking about Kate's ways, uh, whereabouts through Tinder and Hens and, uh, and, you know, Ricky stories of, of my history, because I have a ton of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a ton, a ton of them. Um, and maybe also you, the, the listener or the viewer, actually, because this is going to be a completely uh, visual experience. Hello, uh, can... TV land. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> you guys are going to, we're going to be asking for you guys to come on the show, to talk about your uh, relationship experiences, Jermaine, Wade. Maybe we'll even get Slack on. We can get Slack as part of the Patreon um, yeah, as Slack. well. Yeah, Slack. And Give so, us five toonies, Slack. <laughs> whatever dollar it takes. Toonies? I, I, I know. Or I two know toonies and a loony? Is that two, five dollars? That, that, is, that is correct. If there's anything I learned from She Who Shall Never Be Named, it is two toonies and a loony. Um, two equals and a loony. Two, two, two and a loony. And a loony. Go on, prob- Slack. They'll probably need, actually, um, three toonies and a loony. The conversion Potent- rate? For conversion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I, if I, if I, I don't know, I don't know, what, I don't know how strong what dollar is now, but I, that, that's my that's my assumption. But yeah, um, things you learn from she also not be named. Uh, I feel like a little kid and she's <laughs> like buying soda and she's teaching me all the coins. Oh, um, what are you saying? Powder puppet pals. I, I, you you forget I'm not a powderhead. The Potter Puppet Pals is iconic. You've never seen Snape and the ticking noise? Nope. Oh, I'll just send it to you. It's the greatest thing in the world. It's <laughs> I guarantee you it's probably not. It's 10 years old and it is every bit as good as it was in 2009. Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to have to disagree with that. 2009 was my was heavy frat days for me, too. 2009 um, was a great time. It was senior year of high school. Yeah, oh, I'm a senior of high school too. What a time to be alive! My favorite musical was my senior show, 
I was in chorus and vocal jazz. I was thriving. <laughs> I forgot you were a thespian. Oh, yeah. I was a horrible theater kid. Well, yeah. We, all, right, all right. Here's the thing with theater kids, too. I, theater, and correct me if I'm wrong. We're probably going to have to go into this on another episode. Theater kids are really incestual. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I swear. So in my drama club, we, um, at the, we had multiple cast parties for each show. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> so there's usually one opening night. There's usually one closing night. And then sometimes there was a midweek. Like, on a, like if we had a Thursday show, we'd do a party on a Thursday. Because we that's, would we usually... That's just overkill. Because we would run usually about seven shows. So opening weekend, um, we would do Saturday night. Sunday would have a 2 o'clock matinee and then like a 7 o'clock show. We would have a Thursday show. We would do Saturday night, Sunday matinee, Sunday night. So we'd have eight shows. So we would celebrate a lot. <laughs> and part of that celebration was a time honor Miller Place tradition called Drama Dares. Interesting. Yes. Drama so Dares is hazing and humping each other, basically. Hazing and humping Drama so Dares. Pretty That's... much usually the freshmen would draw the dares. I got mine senior year since I moved here in 10th grade, and no one thought to give me a dare until our senior year. When <laughs> everyone thought realized I had managed to go all through high school. So my drama dare, it was the first time I ever smoked weed in my life, so I was baked. And you've never looked back. <laughs> no. <laughs> so senior this year. This is how you became did, a pothead. Yeah, senior year, the show we did was Rent, which is my all time favorite musical. It was one of the peaks in my life. And then I just remember smoking with a bunch of my friends after clo- after the closing show. Wow. Leaving high school made me a degenerate. So <laughs> I Looking go to back the at party, it now, right? Baked out of my mind. I there was like a buffet of food upstairs and the party was in the basement. So I come downstairs with like, you know Scooby Doo sandwiches and how big they are? Yeah. I had a plate of food like that big. <laughs> and As I come downstairs, they draw my name out of the hat. And I go, oh, no. Because I didn't hear what the dare was. Mm -hmm. I had to wear my underwear on my head for the whole party. Nice. It was stupid. I'm like, really? (laughs) Uh, Other challenges that were given was the pickle blow job. Where pickle would be placed in someone's fly and someone would have to, like, eat it. And the person I think that ate it the fastest would won. Um... Some weird people up there in Miller Place. Oh, yeah. Human stripper pole was one. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, whoever gave the best, like, <laughs> striptease dance won. Weird stuff. So Not I feel yet. like, like, going into the adult dating world as a theater kid, like, you've already seen some shit. So you're a bit more, uh... Yeah, but none of that shit is, like, <laughs> dating appropriate. No, you're just desensitized to some <laughs> nonsense, though. Yeah. Like, none of that is appropriate whatsoever. Who knows? I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a theater kid. I almost, did a, I almost did a drama course, but I did not. I backed out at the last second. I uh, you would have enjoyed it. I did it in middle school. What I shows was, were you in? I was uh, the music man. I was the evil guy. Uh, I forgot. Ah, uh, what was his name? I don't remember. But I, I was seen the music man since I was a kid. I was the antagonist in the music man, which was great. I loved playing the bad guy. Um, and then I was in eighth grade. I was Daddy Warbucks. I was just gonna say, were you ever Daddy Warbucks in eighth? I was. The, yes, I was a rich African American during the Great Depression who adopts a redheaded white girl. It was totally, it was totally accurate. That's the greatest thing. There's an episode. Have you seen Encore on Disney Plus? No. Encore is this amazing show where former um, casts of high school plays go back and go back and put the shows on 10, 20, 40 years later. Oh yeah, that's not that doesn't sound good at all. Oh, it's great. (laughs) It's so good. I watched the Annie, the Annie episode last night, and it was really cute. It brought me back to eighth grade. Thank God. 
Mm. Yeah, no, those plays, those plays are weird. That that did not help any of my dating credibility whatsoever. You would think, even though I'm a shitty singer. Well, I wasn't that bad of a singer back then. Um, but then my voice dropped and became the sensual voice that you hear right now in front of you. Um, uh, Bila is amazing. Is there anything else that we're going to be talking about uh, during Love and War? We've covered a lot. We've learned about. We've learned a lot about each other. Mm-hmm. I want to know how the viewers feel about love and dating. Well, we're going to find out when this drops. This is going to be the pilot episode uh, of, of Love and War. Let me. Sl- I want to know what you guys think. Maybe we'll make this free on the. Uh, maybe we'll make this free on YouTube, the pilot episode, and see how things yes. go from there. I agree. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out, but we want to know what you guys think. I want to know what you guys uh, uh, thought about this show, what you guys want to see moving forward with uh, love and, and wrestling and the connections of, of love and war in between. But until then, folks, let's get out of here because uh, I'm really thirsty, and that's actually I'm thirsty for water and not females for once. So <laughs> without further ado, my name is King Ricky Rose the, of the Kings of the Rings podcast and the general manager of WrestleAddict Radio, and with me is the Kate Murphy. All right, guys, it's been fun talking about love and train wrecks, and it is me, the Queen Bee. You can find me on Instagram at the Kate Murphy and on Twitter with my new handle, the Kate Murphy underscore. It's the reverse of my old one. <laughs> well, just look up the Kate Murphy, and you'll you'll freaking you'll find, find me. me. I'm yeah, not hard can... to find. You can find me on all social media at Ambassador Biggs, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. Uh, I'm not, I used to say some people's DMs, less, less, less people's text messages, but that was an ode to less someone who's... Less people's sh- text, even less people's DMs. <laughs> even less and people's no one DMs. On <laughs> no one, no, Bumble's gone. Bumble, I eliminated Bumble last year, last week. Um, um. Yeah, yeah, Bumble's gone. So there's no more bumbling, there's no DMs, there's no... Rarely and my texts are so dry. Um, that was all, that was also an ode that also was an ode to somebody back in the day. But anywho, uh, until next time, folks. This has been the pilot episode of Love and War. Goodbye and good night. And most importantly, fuck you, Slack. He's, he, he can't catch a break, can he? No. <sighs> Not until he subscribes to our Patreon. Uh, Three well, Toonies and a loony. <laughs> Uh, I feel so sorry for you, Slack. See you later, folks. Bye.